The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome. Before we get started with the stakeholder meeting today for the Board of Nursing, I just want to make sure that my audio is working okay. So I can tell if you can hear me if you raise your hand. That's how we um, get an idea of whether awesome. Okay, so I see multiple hands raised. Thank you. If you could go ahead and lower your hand, that's helpful for when we call for um, stakeholder feedback. Welcome and thank you for attending the State Board of Nursing Stakeholder Meeting via webinar today. Today is August 13th, 2021, and the time is 1.31 p.m. Before we get started, we would like to introduce the staff members from the Division of Professions and Occupations that are present. My name is Darcy Magnuson, and I'm a regulatory analyst with the division. Also attending is Roberta Hills, Program Director, and Elena Camp, Regulatory Coordinator. Due to concerns regarding COVID-19, the division has transitioned to a platform that is 100% virtual, and we appreciate your flexibility. As many of you have been to DORA stakeholder meetings before, we would like to reiterate the importance of your comments today. DORA makes decisions every day that may affect your life and your business, so your input is vital in the rulemaking process. Throughout this process, our goal is to create regulations that clarify and explain legislation, ensure minimum competency to enter and continue to practice, and provide only what is absolutely necessary for consumer protection without creating unnecessary barriers to the marketplace. Your input will be part of the information that goes to the board as the board considers adopting revisions to the rules. More specifically, today we will be discussing that discussing proposed revisions to provide a general cleanup of the rules, changes to license reinstatement requirements, revisions to the approval process of educational programs, revisions to the mentoring description for advanced practice nurses with prescriptive authority, implementation of Colorado House Bill 201326 concerning an expansion of an individual's ability to practice an occupation in Colorado through creation of an occupational credential portability program, implementation of Colorado Senate Bill 21056 concerning expansion of the opportunities to administer medical marijuana at at school to a student with a valid medical marijuana recommendation, and implementation of Colorado House Bill 211276 concerning the prevention of substance use disorders. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the board's website by the close of business on Monday. As this stakeholder meeting is held solely by webinar, please raise your hand by using the hand icon if you would like to speak, and we will unmute your line so that you will be heard by everyone or you can type your comment in the question section and we will read it aloud. Before we start taking comments, I want to ask that anyone providing comments, please state your name and who you represent. Feel free to provide either general comments on the proposed rule changes or specific comments on the proposed language. Please limit your comments to no more than three to five minutes and try not to repeat something that was already said. Stating you're in full agreement with someone else works just fine and will be noted. Because there are multiple board rules that are up for consideration during this rulemaking um, project, I think it would be best to go rule by rule with the proposed changes. That's not to say that we can't move back and forth, but we'll call for testimony, sorry, not testimony, stakeholder comments by rule. Um, and I, that's helpful too, because then we show, as you can see, the proposed changes on the screen. And so then everyone will be able to track and we can keep all of the comments together for each rule. If you are using the audio through your computer, please remember to put any phones on vibrate or turn them off. And whether you are using computer or phone audio, try to keep background noises to a minimum when speaking. So at this point in time, uh, we will begin taking stakeholder comments regarding the proposed changes in Rule 1.1, Rules and Regulations for the Licensure of Practical and Professional Nurses. And Elena will scroll down. You can see as we scroll through, some of them are um, basic changes, typographical non-substantive changes where the statute is being updated. And we will get down to where the substantive, supposed substantive changes are in the rule.
And while we um, get to the proposed changes, we also have um, Tony Cummings, who is a senior program director from the division on the webinar. Okay. So here, um, we can go ahead and pause, Elena. This is the first section of the rules where changes are being proposed. So if stakeholders have any comments on these proposed changes, please raise your hand and we can unmute your line or you can type into the question function of the webinar and we will read it out loud for the recording. I see Kathleen McGinnis, your hand is raised. We should be able to hear you. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Hi, my name is Kathleen McGinnis. I'm the professional education manager at the Health Education and Resources Institute and manage the nurse refresher program um, through four theory. Uh, I, uh, I'm excited about proposed changes to uh, the reinstatement programs and hoping that uh, one of the things could, that could be changed would be allowing RNs seeking reinstatement to be allowed to complete up to 100% of their clinical hours, the uh, um, uh, high quality simulation program. And I, I have, um, so that's my first comment. And then I'm also wondering on uh, above that section, number five, six, seven, and eight, that's being added to the requirements for a refresher program. If you could clarify number five, manage sentinel events effectively, what what that means, like is it preventing sentinel events or never events, or is it how to respond to a sentinel event? I'm, I'm not real clear on that. Okay. Roberta, do you have any um, thoughts on that or? How do you want to do? It has to do with responding um, to um, events that are um, rapidly moving uh, in a negative direction to be a responsive to patients or to people uh, who are in these events. And um, maybe the wording could be better. Okay. And do you have some suggestion on wording? Um, I well, first of all, if I could also clarify, so this would be for phase one or phase two. Um, this actually has to do with um, the whole thing has to do with both phases because when you say phase one, you're talking about theory, yes. and when you say phase two, you're talking about clinical. Right. So they should theoretically know what to look for and what when they see it they know that it's an emergent issue that needs to be addressed and not ignored okay. and then they would need in clinical to be able to practice it okay and so perhaps um i like the way you said you know managing an urgent um, maybe an urgent or impending event to prevent a fentanyl event, perhaps? Something like that? Hi, this is Elena. Um, Ms. McMahon, if you can just repeat that so I can capture your, your recommendation. McKinnis, sorry. Um, and, and I'm not sure if my my comments are that I, I'm not sure I said it all that great, but um, um, let's see, managing urgent or impending events to prevent fentanyl events. You said managing ur um, urgent events or situations or I, I'm not sure on the exact wording. Okay. And I think that the point is that that language is not clear right now. And so if you have, we don't want to put you on the spot either. 
to come up with language. If you have ideas or other stakeholders have ideas, now having a better understanding of what the intent is behind that proposed change, you can always submit it in writing um, for the board to review um, and consider, or we can continue working on that language um, as well to propose it to the board. I'd be happy to submit something in writing as well. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other comments regarding Rule 1.1? Um, just, just the potential uh, to change the 50% may be conducted in a simulation environment to up to 100%. If um, that, that's my proposal. Okay. Do you see that, Elena, under the first under, row where it says 50% may be conducted in a sim no, in the chart under five to ten years? Or more and or more than ten years. Up, up, yeah. And just very quickly, may I thumb?
April, the next proposed change is to strike subsection 10 and renumber the other sections. Okay, I show a hand raised by Harry Gorky. Harry Gorky, you're self muted. Once you unmute, we should be able to hear you. Looks like we can hear you. Yes, Harry Gorky, um, Regis University. I really wondered um, just what the impetus was for this change, and I don't know if Roberta can answer that, but why we would take this out. Number 10. Uh, I think it was recommended because um, it um, the information in it um, seems to interfere with a program's ability to show um, that they have what's needed to implement an education program, and that's kind of what the board's jurisdiction is. Do you have what's what you need to implement a program? And this seems to have gone beyond that. So new programs coming, and, and I'm asking questions to clarify because mm -hmm. I'm not sure I understand. Um, mm -hmm. So new programs coming in to the area would not then have to show that there's not an impact on other nursing education programs for clinical placement. Right, the market itself would work itself out. The um, the new program has to meet this kind of the structure and the um, uh, the quality that's required in the rules, but um, but the board doesn't have jurisdiction to actually manipulate the marketplace so we just have our jurisdiction is is really does the program have what's required in order to produce the quality of graduate that uh, the board um, requires great thank you for your clarification mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm going to um, place you back on mute and I see you lowered your hand. Are there any other individuals that want to provide feedback for the board regarding this proposed strike through? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone else, so we can move on. Here's the next proposed change. Any comments regarding this proposed change and strike through? And I want to, uh, while we check to see if we have anyone who has a hand raised, just to remind everyone who's participating that you're always welcome to submit written comments in addition to if you think of something after the meeting today, you can always provide written comments to the email address that's listed on the notice for today's meeting, which is Dora underscore DPO underscore rulemaking at state.co.us. Um, and then the other thing is that this meeting, um, as we mentioned, is being recorded. And so it will be posted on the board's website. So if you want to listen again to what people had to say and think more about the comments and then provide written comments, you're always welcome to do that in addition. So I'm not seeing any 
raised hand. If you can move forward. There's phase two of the approval process. Again, the note to consider revising. The new language of the nursing education program must apply on a board approved application form. regard to phase three of the approval process, another question for stakeholders about whether to consider revising. Again, an addition of the nursing education program must submit the request for full approval on a board approved application form suggested addition. Okay, moving on to rule 1.5, rules and regulations for licensure of psychiatric technicians. So the proposed changes in this rule are to implement House Bill 2013-26, as you can see there in the comments. And that's the Occupational Credential Portability Program. Moving on to 1.10, Rules and Regulations for certific Certification as a Nurse Aid. Okay, 
you can see the statutory or the article references there that were incorrect, so correcting those. A rule 1.13, rules and regulations regarding the delegation of nursing tasks. So you can, we'll go down, um, and this is to implement Senate Bill 21056. And the title of that bill. It was included in the um, notice that. It's concerning expansion of the opportunities to administer medical marijuana at school to a student with a valid medical marijuana recommendation and, and the appropriation. You can see the added proposed added subsection 7 uh, with a note to reference the specific statute instead of referencing the Senate bill. Any comments on this proposed change? Okay, I have a hand raised by Catherine Golden. Um, we should be able to hear you, Catherine Hi. Golden. Yes. Hi, this is Catherine Golden. I represent Lee 411. Um, it's a we are a nonprofit cannabis nurse hotline, national cannabis nurse hotline. Um, I just want a clarification, if you wouldn't mind, on this addition. Um, uh, school personnel that volunteered to administer. I just want a clarification why that's added. Uh, this is included under a section called exclusions. So. Uh, nursing so this particular uh, administration of, of non-smokable marijuana in the schools is excluded from the delegation requirements okay I was just um you know it's my first time laying eyes on this I just wanted to make sure that this isn't added because nurses are refusing to um, administer care. Is that correct? It's just... No, it's just to, to say it's not, um, it's not a task that nurses are required to delegate. In fact, it's a volunteer, the way that the law was written. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone in the school um, can volunteer to assist a student to administer them and so it's excluding delegation um, of this uh, task okay okay all right um all right thank you because um there we have lots of resources since this is a specialty um for nursing and cannabis that there are lots of resources out there um if there were uh concerns with school nurses having um, to understand the new specialty of cannabis. I just wanted to make sure that um, they weren't delegating the task to, um, you know, other personnel when they could fill that task, you know, quite easily being, in, being a nurse. So I just wanted to make sure I understood that clearly. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and place you back on mute. Um, 
Anyone else want to weigh in on this proposed addition? I'm not seeing any other raised hands, so I think we can. Oh, I do. Hold on one second. Michelle Dumay, you're self muted. We should be able to hear you now. Yes, good afternoon. Um, I am Michelle Dumay. I am both <clears throat> representing um, concerned parents as well as I am a CNA, recently licensed uh, in the state of Colorado. My question is this I just want to clarify a point um, also raised by the previous um, speaker. In the state of Colorado, are nurses specifically uh, not allowed to administer, as I was recently told by a DPS employee that she is not, she is a nurse, she is not permitted to administer medical cannabis to, um, to, to patients that are in the DPS system. So I, I'm asking for a clarification on that, please. So my suggestion would be to um, read the statute, which Elena is showing, it's also included, um, sorry, not the statute, the Senate bill, which includes the statutes that were modified by the Senate bill and okay. explains um, the authority and also the other, how the, um, education i'm drawing a blank on the specific government agency but they have to also promulgate a policy as well okay so, um i think it would be helpful to i think that's what i'm in i'm in need of if you can tell me what the bill is that you're drawing a blank on i see what she has no, no, the, the bill is senate bill 21056 thank you so much mm -hmm. and it's included um it's for easy access it's included with the notice for today's meeting. It was attached to the draft rules. It's also on the board's website and on the calendar as well. I appreciate so that. If you have a hard time finding it, we can we can point you in the right direction. Thank you, I appreciate that clarification. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and place you back on mute um, and lower your hand. Any other comments regarding the proposed change to the rules? It looks like we have a um, a question, or not necessarily a question. My apologies, and Miss Catherine. Sorry, I can't see your last name on this. She just spoke. Oh, I think we're. Yeah, not the last person, but the person before. Okay. Just didn't want to skip anybody. All right. I think we can move on. Okay, rule 1.14, rules and regulations to register professional nurses qualified to engage in advanced practice registered nursing.
uh, 1.15 rules and regulations for prescriptive authority for advanced practice registered nurses. Any comments on the proposed addition here regarding the completion of a 750 hour mentorship? I don't see anyone, so I think we can move on. And if uh, someone does raise a hand, then we can go back. The comment there about um, if the board does choose to just making sure that um, the reference is properly incorporated as required by Title 24. So that's just a flag to um, check in with the board's attorney general on and receive essential legal advice. Another on subsection, subsection G, mentorship requirements. And finally, 1.16 duty to report requirements. The suggestion is to strike felony because that conflicts with the statute as there are other reporting requirements for nurses. And then the final uh, proposed new rule is to implement House Bill 21-1276, which is concerning the prevention of substance use disorders and in connection therewith, making it an appropriation. Um, this is the proposed new rule. Do any stakeholders have feedback on the language? This particular legislation does impact the prescribing boards. Um, so it's be, being considered by all of the other boards with licensees with prescriptive authority.
I have a hand raised by Karen Zink. A couple hands raised. Let me see here. Where is it? I lost you in my list. Hold on. Okay, I will I show Constance McMenamin. Um, you're unmuted. We should be able to hear you. Hi there, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, Constance McMenamin, nurse practitioner. Um, I work at the university in the MS and autoimmune encephalitis clinic. I actually would like, uh, under neurologic condition, could you um, list stiff person syndrome? Or, uh, yeah, stiff person syndrome. It's, I have to tell you, in a, my 20 years as a prescribing nurse practitioner, this is one area that we are, um, that we use a fair amount of diazepine, um, an extraordinary amount, and it's necessary. So I, I see somebody else is saying, add panic conditions as an exemption. I had highlighted this, and I'm hoping that neurologic condition, um, we would not have an issue. And I know you, you're saying that you can't, you won't cut it off and things like that, um, and, it, and that's fine. But if we could actually specifically write stiff person syndrome, um, the second point is I'm representing myself. I'm not representing the university. I'm representing myself as a prescriber in this clinic. Just to be clear on that. Okay. Where did you want to add the stiff person syndrome? So under so number five, a neurologic condition including post-traumatic brain injury or catatonia. I would also specifically like to address stiff person syndrome. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, those five um, in the list are taken directly from the statute. So just wanted to point that out. I think that that's language that's taken verbatim from the statute. But we will certainly add your comments um, in for the board to see. Great, thank you. This, this is Elena. I, I couldn't quite hear what you wanted added. Did you say stiff person syndrome? Yes, stiff, S-T-I-F-F, person and okay. syndrome. Okay, I'm going to, I see you muted yourself. I'm going to place you back on mute and lower your hand. Um, feel free to raise it again if you want to add anything else. Um, Karen Zink, I saw your hand was raised. I hope that we didn't miss you. So if you would like to speak, feel free to raise your hand again. We'll go ahead and pause here um, for a couple minutes while we wait to see if any other individuals want to provide any comments. This is the last um, proposed change, so this is the last rule that's being considered by the board. I want to remind everyone that uh, the, if you want to track and follow um, what's going on with the rulemaking, the best place to look is on the board's website under public notices. Like I mentioned earlier, this that's where the stakeholder recording from today's meeting will be posted. It's also where you can find the draft rules. Um, you can find stakeholder comments. You can also find the notice for the um, upcoming rulemaking hearing or any other activity that's going on related to rulemaking. The other place that you can find information um, is on the board's calendar. That's where we post the notices as well. Um, and then we do send emails to licensees and stakeholders in advance of the rulemaking hearing and any stakeholder meetings. I show Anna Swanson that you have your hand raised. We should be able to hear you. Okay, hi. Um, yeah, my name is Anna Swanson. I'm a nurse practitioner that is um, currently going through the provisional prescriptive authority to full prescriptive authority mentorship requirement. Um, so if we could go back to that, I do have a quick question. Uh, 
Tana Swanson, do you remember what roll number that was? Or Roberta, if you know. Um, Mary, it's 1.15. 1.15, okay. Thank you. It, yeah, there's several pages there. But my main question is just under the language that talks about um, failure to complete the mentorship requirement would result in loss of provisional license. Um, it can that be clarified? Is that a permanent loss? Can uh, people that fail to meet the 750 hours due to other reasons reapply or is that a permanent loss of license? I'm just a little confused about the language there. I'm sorry, I don't know what rule that was. No worries. Find it. Mean statement, okay. We know. It looks like that's the end of the end of oh. I wrote a note, but not the rule, because I saw something about failure to complete would result in the loss of the provisional license. I'm just curious about the language of that, but. Okay. Well, you could do a control F using the failure to complete and see, even typing in failure to see that. Um, I think the language is that it's expired. Okay. So, it's on page 61 of 124. Any applicant not completed, oops, that's with one year of this application that expires. It's a three year mentorship bill. So let me see. So okay. Yeah. Um, then I guess that I don't know where we would, where I would. But meaning the qualifications, meaning if the 750 hours aren't obtained, you can well, still have provisional. Right. You can reapply for prescriptive authority. And because you don't have the, the okay. mentorship, you would be provisional again. Okay. If you locate the language too and you want to send in a written question, you can always do that as well and we can get back to you if okay. that's helpful. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and place you back on mute and lower your hand. And then we'll do a final um, call for anyone that wants to provide any feedback regarding the proposed changes today. Like I said, we always um, welcome written comments. Um, the sooner you can submit them, the better. That way, um, we can provide them to other stakeholders via the board's website and also give them to the board in advance of the permanent rulemaking hearing.
So I don't see anyone else um, has indicated they want to provide comments. So I am going to go ahead and wrap up the meeting then, taking one last look. Right. Um, thank you so much for participating in today's meeting. All comments and program recommendations will be provided to the board for review and consideration before the board deliberates on the final version of the rules at the permanent rulemaking hearing, which is tentatively scheduled for October 27th of 2021. That concludes our stakeholder meeting for today. Um, thank you for your participation and we are going to end the webinar now.